his career to the scientific study of calorie restriction, and in particular, he's been interested in elucidating mechanisms by which CR retards aging and investigating uh, such effects in primates. I think most of us have positive feelings toward Dr. Weindruck, <laughs> uh, and, and especially because of his early association with Dr. Walford and his continuing pioneering work in CR. I'd, I'd like to let you know also that he was instrumental in our efforts uh, to recruit the scientists who you've um, heard present here at this conference. Um, and, and that, of course, was the main reason we held it here in Madison. And so we owe a lot to Dr. Weindruck in that regard. I'd like to thank him very much for his help. Okay, his topic this morning is uh, calorie restriction and aging and historic overview. Thank you. You're welcome. <clears throat> well, I certainly hope you've had a great meeting and uh, enjoyed Madison. I apologize for not being able to spend more time than this uh, with you. It's been a hectic period. In, in science, we're often uh, slaves to NIH grant proposal submission deadlines, and our largest grant proposal has to do with looking at whether caloric restriction retards aging in monkeys, and the five-year renewal for that was due uh, on June 1st. So me many of the speakers you heard, uh, such as Dr. Coleman and Dr. Barger, uh, were in the very early phases of recovery from uh, that process. Uh, so I'm uh, a bit more recovered, but I had to attend to a zillion things that had been uh, forgotten during the period of writing this proposal. In any event, uh, being the last speaker, uh, I'm honored to uh, provide this overview of uh, the history of caloric restriction. And some of the things I'll talk about, uh, doubtlessly, you've uh, heard already during uh, the meeting here. And if things are completely redundant in spots, just please tell me and we'll invest uh, time uh, elsewhere. Uh, this one is uh, no, nothing new, but I think offers an uh, overview of caloric restriction and where it is uh, today. Uh, we're all familiar with the uh, published ranges of decrease in caloric intake and what the results are, uh, as shown mostly in laboratory rodents and more recently uh, increasing activity in uh, uh, model organisms such as yeasts and uh, Drosophila, even a paper in dogs I'm sure you're uh, aware of. And I think we can uh, group into three uh, categories the uh, areas which are most actively being pursued, that is mechanisms in rodents, efficacy in primates, and this newer uh, possibility of discovering uh, CR mimetics uh, so that one need not uh, live a calorically restricted life uh, in the dream of uh, gaining its benefits. Oops. So this always happens when you transfer a uh, presentation from uh, a Mac format to a PC, you get changed bullets. Oftentimes they turn from nice solid circles to like religious crosses. It'll happen during this. Uh, <laughs> it may indeed be a highlight of the presentation. Uh, um, so I'll provide a bit of an overview uh, concerning uh, caloric restriction or dietary restriction. I guess I, I like the DR term because that's what we used initially and that's what Dr. Walford and I opted to uh, title uh, our book with. More recently and perhaps more Accurately, uh, CR has uh, enjoyed a, a good decade of growth over DR, I think it's fair to say. So I'll talk a bit about the uh, foundations of uh, caloric restriction. Uh, there was a German scientist, Moreschi, who observed uh, that uh, starvation conditions were associated with lower rates of tumor growth. Uh, you're all familiar with McKay, and I'll talk about, I guess, the growth era of the uh, uh, caloric restriction the 60s uh, through about 1980 when Morris Ross, Roy Walford, Bob Good, and Ed Mazarow uh, were uh, clear leaders in this area of research. And then the last consideration, or the second to last, I'm sorry, is uh, uh, in the 1980s when the NIA showed uh, a, a great uh, increased interest and in, accordingly in funding of caloric restriction research. 
The Food and Drug Administration actually got interested in caloric restriction, and you may have seen the work of, uh, from Ron Hart, Richie Fewers, and others at the National Center for Toxicologic Research, which is out in the country about 40 miles, I believe, south of Little Rock. Um, the FDA became interested in uh, caloric restriction as it uh, related uh, to long-term toxicity testing, and uh, the, there were uh, for uh, drug approval, one must test the agent in uh, rats for a two-year period, and investigators were finding that if they allowed rats to eat all that they wanted to and became big, fat, white, pillow-like uh, substances, uh, that the animals died at 20 or 22 months of age. They couldn't complete the test. Meanwhile, they're reading our paper about mice living 50 months of age, and they started talking with us. So that kind of uh, led to that effort, and actually a big NIA-FDA collaboration where they generated large numbers of both normally fed and calorically restricted rats and mice for uh, wider uh, uh, study uh, uh, was a, a mark of that uh, period of time, as was the uh, serious search for mechanisms. And in the 90s and beyond, I think that the mechanisms uh, uh, obviously are uh, primary to pursue. Uh, there's these new models. There's genomics. You heard my colleague, uh, Dr. Prala, talk about some of our work uh, that uh, we've done over the last three or four years. There's human trials, uh, both your own and those uh, from the NIA and the calorie trial, uh, and so on and uh, so forth. So this is uh, nothing uh, new, but it brings home, I think, an important point, and that is that caloric restriction is not just a rodent phenomenon, and you can see from the survival curves that very diverse organisms ranging from protozoans to fish to water fleas to mice in our laboratory all display the right shift of survival, both for the average and the maximum lifespan. And as you likely know, it's not been very easy to uh, trigger this increase in maximum lifespan by other interventions uh, in rodents. Exercise doesn't do it. May help average lifespan. That's not trivial. Uh, but caloric restriction uh, clearly does. Uh, you've likely heard about some of the genetic alterations which are associated with uh, longevity, um, such as dwarf mice and uh, the like. I think that these models are very complicated. Uh, and uh, uh, complex to interpret in terms of food intake because they are such little mice. They are eating fewer calories per whole animal. And in terms of uh, caloric exposure, if you will, to different organs, uh, there may indeed be real caloric restriction ongoing in some of those models. Uh, so I'm not completely convinced that these are separate forms of lifespan extension, uh, at least uh, completely. Uh, probably 95% of the CR work has started at early in the lifespan of animals. Uh, a long-term interest of mine has been to start it in middle age or uh, later, and I'll talk a little bit about uh, what Dr. Walford and I discovered uh, you know, over 20 years ago uh, with regard to the ability of caloric restriction started in middle age or early middle age to uh, extend maximum lifespan. Um, you are clearly motivated to live the life that you're living uh, based on uh, data such as this. I apologize for the occasional DR or CR, uh, just treat them as equal for today. Uh, as you likely know, every animal model has its own uh, set of diseases or particular disease to which it is prone uh, to die from. Uh, I've opted to study mice from long-lived strains over the years. Uh, they tend to die of cancers, mostly cancers of uh, the immune system, lymphomas or uh, liver tumors, hepatomas. But one of the striking things about caloric restriction is the breadth of animal models in which this simple nutritional maneuver uh, has efficacy. And this is a, a partial listing of uh, uh, what has been observed to be favorably impacted by caloric restriction in rodent models. Um, so one could easily criticize a single study uh, such as ours and saying that caloric restriction does not necessarily retard aging because it's blocking 
cancer development or retarding the development of cancer in these long-lived mouse strains. Uh, perhaps if that was the only shred of evidence out there about caloric restriction and age-associated uh, pathologies, that might be a valid argument, but it, it, it uh, fails miserably in view of this and the broad data set showing the uh, uh, retardation of aging and disease by this intervention. Oh, that's sad. Uh, this is a graph <laughs> which was to show the explosive growth in caloric restriction uh, citations uh, over the years. Let me just turn this on and show it to you because it's, it's kind of a fun one. But I'll do that while I'm doing this other stuff. Basically, Caloric restriction citations have gone from a few per year in the 70s to hundreds per year now. It has the inverse look of what my uh, money market account value looks like. <laughs> one goes up and the other's going down. Hopefully we'll get some of these other ones here. Ah, this is a fun one. So as uh, the world has become aware, or at least a portion of the world, of the uh, ability of caloric restriction to retard the aging process. Uh, major media has also become very interested in this. And shown here are some headlines uh, from a Wall Street Journal article about caloric restriction, which focused a lot on the primate studies. Uh, when Tom and I and uh, our colleagues published our first gene chip paper, that uh, also got uh, a lot of uh, uh, attention as well. And uh, likewise, uh, uh, several uh, national TV shows have shown interest uh, as well. And, well that's strange way. Well, let's start at the near beginning. And you're looking at a photograph of uh, Clive McKay, who uh, authored the uh, first uh, paper showing that lifespan uh, was extended by caloric restriction. I actually got this picture from the Gerontological Society of America, uh, where uh, Dr. Uh, McKay uh, was president uh, several years back. He was a Cornell University researcher, uh, you probably know the story, who was interested in the effects of stunted, uh, of, of stunted growth on, on health. And uh, so he restricted the food intake of rats so that they grew more slowly and uh, was uh, surprised to learn, and this is the first page from uh, their uh, classic paper, that uh, these uh, growth stunted animals uh, were uh, uh, longer lived and stayed healthier longer than the conventionally fed uh, uh, animals in the colony. So that really uh, uh, started uh, the field. A very important contributor early on was uh, the University of Chicago's, um, uh, I believe it was, no, it was Michael Reese Hospital. I thought he might be with the University of Chicago. Albert Tannenbaum, who uh, published some uh, beautifully controlled uh, experiments uh, which really pinpointed the caloric intake per se as driving the ability of this regimen to oppose the development of both spontaneous and induced cancers in mouse models. Really a very, very impressive uh, set of uh, uh, work uh, setting the foundations for this field. I don't know if any of you have had the pleasure of trying to read any of Morris Ross's papers. I still have memories of uh, flying across the country early in my career trying to understand what these very complex uh, uh, papers were really trying to communicate. But what Ross uh, did was in studying in Sprague Dolly rats, he really did some of the only work asking the question, what is the optimal composition of a restricted diet in order to uh, see the uh, greatest lifespan extension? Um, in fact, the diet that Roy and I used and I continue to use uh, was modeled after Morris Ross's diet D. This diet had the uh, characteristics of being high in protein, uh, moderate in fat, 13.5% uh, corn oil, but it was uh, enriched in protein, uh, and also I believe it was enriched in the vitamin and, and mineral uh, mixtures. I'd have to go back and confirm that. But it was Ross's diet D 
which we opted uh, to formulate uh, our diets uh, uh, on and modified uh, accordingly. And this diet has been uh, upgraded, hopefully, uh, over the years, and uh, but still is sort of the scaffold of, uh, of what we do. But he did a, a lot of very interesting work in the area of nutrition and aging, spanning not only from caloric restriction, but to the effects of self-selection in rats. If, they give, if, if he provided three or four different diets and the rats ate what they wanted to, he uh, provided nice longevity and disease information on these individual rats. Very careful work. And this is uh, one of several papers one could take from uh, Dr. Walford's uh, laboratory. This was published in 1975, which was the year uh, I think I first met Roy. I was a confused uh, graduate student uh, looking for uh, uh, a place to do my research. So what you do is you, you uh, spend time in different people's laboratories and you decide what's most interesting. So. Uh, <laughs> Roy's uh, uh, area of research in aging was uh, far more interesting to me than other opportunities in bladder cancer and uh, <laughs> other uh, topics. And uh, I still remember my first meeting with Roy when uh, we were deciding, uh, he was actually presenting the opportunities uh, of what one might do in the laboratory. And uh, he uh, named about six or seven things that uh, he would be happy to support uh, in his laboratory that ranged from endocrine studies to immune studies and he also mentioned dietary restriction. So he gave me some things to read and I went home and started reading and it was uh, maybe six hours later that I decided I wanted to study caloric restriction. I had no clue that uh, I'd still be studying it uh, at my uh, current stage in life. But that's been a good thing. Uh, and. Uh, of course, I'm thankful to uh, Roy for uh, 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 setting the foundations uh, for my career. Uh, so yes, his lab was focused uh, pretty much squarely on immune function at that point in time uh, in the context of caloric restriction. And they were learning that the immune system stayed younger longer with caloric restriction. At the same time, Bob Good and his colleagues at uh, Sloan Kettering and later uh, in St. Petersburg, Florida, uh, we're looking uh, very productively at the effects of caloric restriction on autoimmunity in various mouse models and finding just uh, incredible ability of caloric restriction to oppose the development of autoimmunity and also to slow it down even in when it is ongoing. I, th I think this continues to have important uh, clinical implications. This uh, is the uh, first clear demonstration that one could retard aging based on longevity analysis uh, uh, in mice by starting caloric restriction in middle age. At this case, we started at 12 months of age in a long-lived F1 hybrid strain and in C57 black 6 mice, which are lower in body weight than the F1 hybrids. Um, and basically what we observed was that uh, uh, in the longer-lived F1 hybrid, uh, there was about a 10% increase in average and maximum lifespan. Similarly, about a 20% gap in both of those outcomes uh, in the C57 black 6 mice. So this suggested that one could start caloric restriction in fully grown animals and at least observe uh, a significant portion of the benefit based on longevity and uh, disease uh, patterns. The cancer uh, patterns were favorably influenced, lower incidence and later uh, appearances. Um, I think this notion, I don't know how much Dr. Prala talked about this in his uh, talk about our uh, gene expression profiling work, but I think the notion that starting caloric restriction in middle age uh, has efficacy in slowing the aging process probably signals that there is some type of a metabolic shift that occurs um, arguably at any age uh, when one reduces the uh, calorie intake. And what I'm spending a lot of my time currently doing is looking at these massive gene expression databases that we have created and asking targeted questions about uh, genes which may be shifting in their expression activity not with aging so much, but specifically by caloric restriction. Uh, 
So we see two general types of uh, changes in uh, effects of caloric restriction on gene expression when we do these global effects. We see the ability of caloric restriction